Hello, my name is Simon Kleiber and I'm from the Institute of Computer Graphics and Knowledge Visualization of Graz University of Technology in Austria. Today I would like to present to you our work on the immersive analysis of user motion in virtual reality applications. With the recent rise of virtual reality, it is becoming more and more accessible and integrated in everyday lives and also in commercial and industrial applications. For example, McLaren designers are using VR for the design of their sports cars. A large benefit of VR and a major reason why it is becoming more and more important is the fact that there are no physical dependencies when designing, simulating or evaluating products. Hence, it is no surprise that there is an ever-increasing number of applications for virtual reality. For example, in industry, workers can be trained virtually for an assembly, thus reducing the needed time in a physical training setup. Furthermore, processes and designs can be evaluated without the need for physical prototypes. Another example is medicine, where doctors can be trained virtually without the need for props or consequences for mistakes. In the shown image, a resident with the ophthalmology clinic uses the virtual reality simulator for warm-up and to tone hand, eye and foot coordination. Finally, we have possibly the most important driving force behind the developments in the last years, gaming, where players tend to strive to improve themselves. For this work, we have used a car shop assembly game, where users have to quickly assemble four wheels on a racing car as an example, you can see the environment to the right. In the aforementioned applications, movement plays a vital role, and analyzing movement in VR allows us to analyze and optimize performance in task-oriented VR scenarios, but it also lets us evaluate and assess virtual simulation or training sessions. By doing these analysis, design decisions can also be evaluated and improved. For an assembly, for example, designers can simulate the assembly over multiple sessions and try to improve the workflow by comparing their movement. Since more and more will be shifted into virtual environments, it is important that we are able to analyze the virtual sessions in virtual reality itself. This way, there is no need to switch between devices to analyze the captured movement. In our work, the pedestal you see on the right allows users to start and stop sessions and to switch to analysis mode. We are able to perform the aforementioned analysis because the virtual environment allows us to measure everything we need since virtual reality provides us with rich information where we can observe anything in the environment without uncertainty. Furthermore, by nature, most commercial VR setups provide us with high quality tracking of the head and both hands. Movement data has a strong link between motion and the environment. Using the same environment for performing the actions and for analyzing them gives valuable visual context and guidance to better understand the spatial embedding of the data and has the potential to immerse users more strongly in the movement. Here, for example, we can see that the users move towards the wheel pickup spot and the wheels because we can see the environment the users used. If I hide the environment, it becomes much harder to make sense of the movement. Now for our work, we have decided to use 3D trajectories to visualize the movement data. This allows for a direct comparison of the movement without any additional visualization and gives us the chance to make use of VR's depth perception. According to previous studies, VR also has the potential to be more engaging and to be good at showing structure and data. With this, outliers are easily visible by just looking at the data, and here, for example, we can quickly see that the blue session moves erratically. Using trajectories for movement analysis is a rather historic problem. At the beginning of the 20th century, Frank and Lillian Gilbreth used what they called chronocycle graphs to record the movement of workers by attaching light sources to the workers' hands and creating a long exposed shot of their work. This gave them trajectories of the workers' movements. While there is also work on 2D trajectory analysis, I will focus on 3D for this talk. Most 3D trajectory visualization methods use a third dimension to display additional data on 2D trajectories. We can see this to the right with 2D geographic movement information and a stacking of information in the third dimension. Alternatively, some methods also use inherent 3D movement data as a basis. Tashiro et al, for example, visualized 3D movement data of doctors using a haptic pen to compare the movement of doctors with different levels of proficiency. In this case, we can see that experienced surgeons have a more steady movement towards the target. Now, immersive analytics is a research direction that has the goal to revisit 3D visualization in an immersive and, in our case, virtual reality context to re-evaluate the affordances brought by the technological advances of the last 10 years. For example, Herter et al. visualize flight path data in their immersive analytics application. The use of VR gives them a better depth perception and more immersion for their users. It also allows them to use a natural interaction technique by allowing users to select trajectories by brushing with the ray. 
Wagner Phil et al. evaluates a space-time cube visualization in VR that visualizes 2D geographic movement data, using the third dimension to convey time. They found that users had a similar performance to standard desktop applications, despite less familiarity of users, and with greater usability and less mental workload. Now, motion analysis can also be performed with full body tracking, however this requires a more complex setup where we focus on only the head and both hands. Like discussed, in contrast to these methods, we have tailored our system on the analysis of the movement generated by the three tracking sources of most VR setups and focus on the analysis in the original environment. I would now like to go into the details of our immersive analytics system. For our work, we have identified three main tasks. Firstly, users should be able to analyze the change in behavior of repeated motion. This can be important for assembly tasks, where the same task is performed multiple times and an analyst wants to see how the user's movement changes over time. Second, it should be easy to detect anomalies in the movement. This is especially important when comparing multiple sessions with similar expected behavior. And lastly, we want to give users a way to find variations in user motion in single sessions or between multiple sessions to see how different users perform in the virtual environment. With these goals and our visualization choice also come a few challenges. The most immediate one is visual clutter. As you can see on the right, visualizing the movement of multiple sessions, in this case there are four, can quickly become overwhelming. Virtuality offers a large design space for interactions and we have to make sure that we define appropriate interactions for the visualization and for our tools. To let users perform the mentioned tasks, we want to support an exploratory analysis by providing tools that allow users to gain a quick overview, but that also lets them look at the data in more detail. And finally, like I mentioned, we have movement data for the head and both hands, and this means that we have three trajectories that need to be semantically linked together to better understand their relation at any point in time. Let's now discuss how we solve these challenges and the implemented tools for users. First, the visual representation. For each session, we have three trajectories in the same color and different colors per session. Then, to give users a way to understand the direction and speed of the movement at a glance, we animate small glyphs on each section with the same direction and same relative speed as the original movement. The glyphs also show the motion source, i.e. head or hands. Finally, to give the captured movement a more natural feel, we use centripetal cut rom splines instead of piecewise linear trajectories. Centripetal cut rom splines are interpolating splines that do not deviate much from a piecewise linear look. This ensures that we do not lose any data and that we do not introduce too much artificial movement. To the right you can see what the combination of these features looks like. In this case, the glyphs are an icon of a head-mounted display to indicate that they are head movements. Next, we have the issue of clutter introduced by the trajectories. While sometimes it will be necessary to display all data, users can choose to only show select motion sources. For example, they might only need the head movement. Alternatively, if the movement of all sources is important and users only need an overview of the movement, they can display an average trajectory. Like you can see on the lower image, the average trajectory combines all three motion sources together while still being able to show large changes in any one of them. Finally, a common movement method in VR is teleportation. Since the movement from the teleportation itself is not of too much interest, we made sections of the trajectories that result from teleportation thinner. Users can also opt to remove them completely. To the right you can see a normal scene on top and a scene with all clutter reduction methods in place on the bottom. Finally, while the movement itself is important for spatial context, it might contribute to visual clutter due to its colors and patterns. Users can simplify the environment by removing all textures and only using shading. As you can see to the right, this simplification has the potential to remove unwanted distraction in the scene and in this example to make sure that we can still see all red trajectories. When it comes to the interaction in VR, we have opted for three different types of interaction. The first is a pointing based interaction. It is more range but might be less precise from farther away. You can see to the right here. Then we have local interaction. Its goals are a more tangible interaction metaphor that gives users more spatial control. When grabbing a trajectory, users create a small ball that can display different information at the given location. Users can move the ball either by hand or with a thumbstick. This provides a natural interaction that can also reach farther than arm's reach if users use the thumbstick. Finally, we have our settings tablet. It is the main UI during the exploration and is always accessible to users. 
Users can interact with it via ranged interaction or by touching it with their hands. Like I mentioned, we try to give users appropriate overview and detail tools for the exploration. We have three methods by which users can gain an overview over the movement. First, users can simply use the virtual space and move farther away from the data to gain a general overview. They can do this either via physically moving or by teleporting in the world. Next, users can replay the movement via post triangles that you can see to the right here. They display head and hands and link them together via a translucent triangle. We use such a simplified representation to not introduce even more visual clutter and the choice of the triangle seems to fit quite well. To show the path of the post triangle, it leaves a short-lived trail of particles. Through the animation, users can see the speed and order of the movement over the whole period. You can see an example to the right here. As the third method, we have implemented a keyframe storyboard of the movement. We compute the hierarchical clustering for one session to find timestamps that are well spread over time and space. At these timestamps, we display post triangle for all sessions. This provides an overview over the whole motion while also comparing the movement of different sessions. You can see an example to the right here, where we see that all three sessions start out similar at the timestamp 1, while already deviate at timestamp 2. Users can choose the number of displayed timestamps by changing the level of the hierarchy. For a more detailed view on the movement, users can filter the trajectories. This reduces clutter and lets users focus on certain timestamps, especially in regions with lots of movement. Users can either filter via the settings panel or with local interaction. The local interaction allows them to not only filter based on timing, but also allows them to filter spatially, since they can place the filter at a spatial region of interest. Next, as you can see to the right, users can see timing and motion source, but also the exact location and rotation at every point on the trajectories. In this case, the pointing-based interaction was used, but the local interaction is also possible. Finally, users can use the local interaction to display a post triangle at the corresponding location. This gives very fine control over the animation, and you can see the user moving the post triangle by moving the hand, and also by using the thumbstick on a controller. I have here a shortened demonstration of how a workflow in our application might look like. First, we gain an overview by looking at the storyboard. Here we can already see the discrepancies of the movement for the users as early as timestamp 1. Next, we look at the animation to see whether we find any glaring anomalies. We can see that the blue session moves quite a bit farther away than the others from the small snippet at the bottom here. And green seems to be the first to finish all tasks. Next, we look at the wheel pickup spot more closely. Remove the clutter reduction to see everything and place some locally controlled post triangles to better understand the movement. We can see from the trajectories that all users change their pickup behavior over time. The post triangles shows a bit more detail though. In this case, we're interested in the blue and the green post triangles. And they show us that the blue session bent a lot farther forward to pick up the wheel. And we can move the post triangles around a little bit to gain a bit more insight in how the user reached the pickup spot. To evaluate our implemented system, we have performed a small qualitative thinking aloud evaluation with five researchers in the field. We used observations from the users of the car shop assembly at a public event to create the data for the evaluation. An example for the data can be seen to the right where user deviates from the expected behavior towards the middle. Before performing for the four tasks, participants had a chance to familiarize themselves with the system. Finally, participants also filled out a system usability score. We found that our system is a first step in the right direction. Participants' use of the given tools varied per person, indicating that the freedom for different approaches is valuable. In some instances, we had to remind participants of some tools, which may, may be because the initial familiarization was too short. For example, participants tended to forget the local interaction, but they were able to solve most tasks regardless. 
Participants were also able to quickly observe positional anomalies, order and timing related differences during exploration, but had to look more closely for more subtle detail. They found the environmental context given by analyzing the data in the environment it was captured in valuable. And finally, the usability questionnaire showed an acceptable usability with an average of 76, but the system is still to be considered an expert system. Currently, the visualization can support a handful of sessions before the visual clutter becomes too much. We have tried to find a good middle ground between an efficient way of visualizing the trajectories versus visual fidelity, and it seems that the visual clutter becomes an issue faster than performance. For the future, we would like to explore different clustering methods for a storyboard and incorporate the notion of task itself in our system. Additionally, we find that ways for automated guidance would fit the exploratory nature of our system. To summarize, we have created an immersive analytic system for VR movement data in VR. We visualize movement data via three trajectories and provide clutter reduction methods and overview in detail for explorative analysis of the data. Through this, the movement data can be analyzed in the same environment it was created in and we can exploit the improved depth perception and immersion offered by VR. This work was created within the VR for CPPS project and is supported by the Austrian Research Promotion Agency. I would like to thank our project partners, the Division for Visual Computing of Fraunhofer Austria Research GmbH and Avia List GmbH for our collaboration. Thank you very much for your attention and I'll gladly answer some questions now.